welcome to Wandering Wanda. I'm Walter, and it's really windy here at Fort Union Trading Post National Historic Site. Uh, Fort Union was the most important fur trading post on the Upper Missouri River from 1828 to 1867. The Assiniboine, Cree, Ojibwe, and other tribes traded buffalo robes and furs for trade goods such as beads, guns, and blankets. This site was a bastion of peaceful coexistence. And this is where we are today. is over there. You see it in the distance? And the Missouri River is down there. We'll take a clip of it. It's really windy today. And there's Wanda. We are entering North Dakota. We have left North Dakota. Oh, we're in North Dakota. Now we're entering Montana. We've just returned to Montana. And now we're back in... Wait, we're in Montana. We're in Montana. Okay, and this is North Dakota. Now we're in opposite states. Now we're in two different states. Walter's in a different state. Hi, Walter. Can you hear me from the different state? I can hear you. Okay. Okay, let's swap states. Okay, we're swapping states. Walter's in Montana. No, I'm in North Dakota now. You're in Montana. I'm in Montana? Yes, you're in Montana. I'm in Montana. Okay, I don't know how this thing works. Now we're both in North Dakota. Now we're both in North Dakota. Okay. Back in the same state. Back in the same state again. And that is Fort Union. Is that Fort U is it what? Fort Union. Fort Union. That's fine. I don't see no no guns. I said I said guns, firearms. Well there's no red circle. Oh yeah. Hey guys. Hello. Hello. How are you doing today? Oh good. Mm -hmm. Is this the trading house or? It is. This was this was. I mean, I always think oh, of the trading right. room or the trade house as the uh, heartbeat of the post. I mean, the whole idea of these WalMarts in the wilderness is basically the trade with natives, and this is the building that would have occurred in. So. Trade um, house. This is right there. Just a sign. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Now, what made this the longest surviving fur post and the longest running fur post in U.S. history from 1828 to 1867 is, is several reasons. And, and one basically is, is that we're trading with more than one tribe here. It may have been the Assiniboines who asked us to come and asked us to build a trading post here, which is pretty unique in U.S. history anyways, or North American history, but we're also surrounded by Mandan, Hidatsa, Arikara, Cree, Crow, Cheyenne. They're all here. So we got about 13 different tribes who traded here, about eight are local. So, of course, all the things we're trading to the natives for the furs they're bringing to us, because uh, most of the majority of the furs come in by natives is, of course, India cottons, Irish linen, English wool, African ostrich plumes, Chinese vermilion for painting your face, really? um, German axes, French kettles, uh, Italian glass beads. So all this stuff would arrive on steamboat up from St. Louis, and then as many as 20 or 30,000 like bison going back down uh, bison ropes. I mean, it may start as a beaver trade here in 1828, but by 32, 34, we're fully a buffalo post. You know, these are going okay. away, and these are the new currency, the big currency. Here. So okay. it was just 1867. They have to close the doors here because basically, for years it was just natives out here and us, and they can go anywhere and bring in furs. But over the time of this 39 years of running as a fur post, you start seeing trappers coming out, and then you start seeing miners coming out. Then you see Western immigration coming. The homesteaders. And then you see homesteaders and you see the military coming out to protect them. And now they're all out here. 
here up on Upper Missouri. Natives can't go where they used to go. They're being pushed everywhere. So less furs come in. We sell this place in 67 to the army. They dismantle it and basically use the, uh, the stones and the timbers for the construction of Fort Buford two miles away. So really nothing remained here by the 1880s. Um, this was all reconstructed in the 1980s though uh, one of the things that does remain are this little square here of flat stones. Uh, these are the original flat hearth oh, stones and flat wow. fire from the 1828 to 1867 Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you sir. Much. We appreciate it. Okay, let's go into the house. We do have a parking lot area for big rigs. We're dry camping. No utilities. Everyone's just crowded in together. So this is part. <laughs> okay, we're here. We'll be near the last. Oh my goodness. Is that a garbage can? Oh. Oh my goodness, look at this. We are wedged in here. Someone has their generator going. Oh, wow. Dry camping. Oh, that's nice. I like their sayings. Goodness, they are wedged in here. You weren't kidding. <laughs> I wasn't kidding. Why do you have an electrical out? Oh, your That's generator. generator oh, okay. Here. We don't keep. You don't want to put them under no, the rig because be of the exhaust. But 
We just ran it in front of the truck. It's pretty. It's pretty quiet that is we only have two of them that size oh and they're not real heavy so that we can if we put the other one on i think we can run one air conditioner off of this one if we i don't think we're gonna need it though no it's we a won't. pretty i opened up the window and the on the air vent so we should be fine yeah we don't need the air conditioner which I'm so glad we don't, because he would be bitching. Bitch, bitch, bitch. <laughs> well, Rick was fussing about putting the generator in. I'm the one that climbs under there, because we keep it under there, <laughs> and pull it out. <laughs> well, you weren't kidding. You are going to be the last to go. <laughs> Pretty much. There's 10 people behind us, but there won't be many. And they can't, and the uh, motorhomes cannot back up. Toes hooked up. No, we they can can't. Back up. Well, I can theoretically back up too. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't know how. <laughs> well, a guy taught us from England. It's the best way when you're backing up and you want to keep it straight is once you get it going straight, is to just slowly, you know, just put your hand at the bottom of the wheel and just do this. <laughs> and you usually can keep it real straight. Oh, Chester's playing. Yep. Okay, sure. You do? Do you like lots of onions? Yes, please. Oh, good. More? More, please. Now I feel like Oliver. I know, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> please, may I have more? Yes. Thinking onions, that's all. Dogs, uh, Thinking onions. Lots of them. Two scoops. Two good jalapenos, very good. Gracias, There's a step. <laughs> Thank you. We are going to have a driver's meeting, but before we do that, we're going to have to hear it. It's not quite ready yet. We need to get 35 miles out in the Gulf. And you put the drop a line down with some special
and now that the sun is shining the solar panels are charging the batteries up again I made coffee and the ice maker is back on it's a little chilly this morning so I turned on the propane furnace to get the chill out of the air so everything's good we have water and I'm making ice for Walter wonderful view from here would we stay at this campground again the answer would be no and that's not because of the dry camping it's because I don't like dry camping there is another park down below the dam where they do have hookups I don't know whether it's full hookups or not but they have electric whether it's 50 or 30 don't know but it's a magnificent view but I would not stay here because of the view I prefer my 50 amp water in water out pull through hookups but for one night and we were prepared for this they told us in advance that we would be doing this it's I'm perfectly fine with it and we did prepare for it we unplugged everything nothing is plugged in because even the little plugs that were even the plugs that you think aren't picking up power they actually are the blinking lights on some things that takes power so unplug everything that you think is gonna drain your battery and that's what we did and the batteries were just fine through the night oh the, pro the propane furnace just turned off so it's nice and cozy in here again okay we'll see you at the next park We're off Highway 2 in, where are we? Missouri? No, Mo Montana. And we're gonna eat at Hitch and Post Cafe. And Walter's having an omelet? Yes, Denver omelet. Having dinner at Duck Inn, supposedly it's got how many stars? Five Yelp. stars. Five stars in Yelp. So I'm actually looking forward to a good meal, which I haven't really had one unless I made it. Here we are at Family Hansen, Hansen Family RV Park, somewhere in Upper South North Dakota. Not really sure what city. So it was 50 amps sewer water. The park itself is very clean. There are domesticated animals, that red barn behind us. Yeah, the doggy park over there that's fenced. Yeah, doggy park that's fenced. It's a nice clean park. However, Wi-Fi is non-existent. There is no Wi-Fi. Even though they say they have Wi-Fi, they don't. And would we stay in this park again? My answer would be no. We would not. Only because of the Wi-Fi. I don't like RV sites say they have Wi-Fi when they actually don't have Wi-Fi. Checking your email and going in and out of service is not Wi-Fi. But if you don't need Wi-Fi, if you want a nice park, this is a good park to be in. Don't expect just do not expect any telephone service or Wi-Fi. Other than that, this park is very nice, very clean. The RV sites are very long. Here's our RV, uh, one of our RVers. Here. You can put another rig back here. And yes. our rig, our, our site was a good size also. So as you can see over here, Mona can fit and so can their Jeep. 
and their standard rate was forty dollars a night and i believe that there's a good sam discount off of that if you had it okay yeah so they're great um if you pulled in late and you just needed a night you could stop leave in the morning and you'd be fine we got disney parents over there washing his rig so i guess it's allowed i'm not gonna wash it i'd rather pay someone our next stop is glacier uh, looking forward to that all right thank you for watching bye
Actually, we should drag that book out of that line Yes, so it doesn't get sticky on the bottom. Probably yes. already it out. Yes. Somewhere over here. I think it's dry, but that's okay. Your credit.